this is Vince Rosati for CreativeCow.net. Today we're going to look at creating a helix in Adobe Illustrator. Now, you may not find yourself ever needing to illustrate a helix, but learning how to illustrate this particular shape will teach you a number of techniques that will help get you through countless illustration challenges, including the use of the free transform tool in a perspective environment, the illusion of wrapping a shape around another, and maybe we'll do some light shading at the end using the Pathfinder tool. Okay, here we are with our Helix image that we will be illustrating. Uh, the first thing that I like to do when I come in to illustrate an image, I like to go into the Layers palette. And uh, again, since we're using a background image, uh, I don't like to draw on that layer, so we'll lock that and create a new layer. Uh, layer 2, and that's where we'll be doing most of our illustration. We may add new layers, but we don't necessarily have to. Um, I guess I'll point out that uh, on the layer that holds the image, or any other layer, uh, but in this case the image layer, we can double click on that and set the dim setting. Um, and the default is at 50%, and we'll just take a look at that. As you can see, dims it to 50%. Um, then when we draw on top of it, say, you know, grab an ellipse, um, that's at full opacity and uh, many times uh, that can help to have that extra contrast uh, depending on what you want to be doing uh, but I don't really want to use that for this for this particular uh, illustration um, so I'll turn that off and uh, get going with this. The first thing is uh, you, you get your image and immediately you start to think of how you want to um, approach illustrating it. One of the things to note here is that um, a three-dimensional image like this uh, can come in a number of different ways. This came out of Cinema 4D and it's in a perspective view, which is to say uh, if you were to extend these red lines uh, infinitely out to the right, uh, they would eventually meet at a point, um, as opposed to an isometric view where th these lines would never meet. They would be perfectly parallel. Initially, when I thought about doing this, um, I thought that we were going to use the free transform tool to uh, reshape an ellipse to fit this particular shape and then use that as a model to create all the rest of these rings. Um, I guess we'll go through that just to show you uh, initially what my thoughts were on how we were going to create that. Um, and it's a good tool to know and uh, you can use it in many more situations than in uh, other than having a, an isometric illustration so it's worthwhile to take a look at that and see what we're talking about. Okay, so the shape is simple enough. It's a circle. Um, so for that we're going to use the ellipse tool, so that's the L key. Uh, we're going to uh, shift constrain uh, to make it a perfect circle and we're going to make it about the size of the circle that we're going to be uh, initially trying to illustrate. Um, now since we're going to be using the free transform tool along defined planes which these red lines or the blue lines for that matter but uh, the red lines these kind of define our planes. Um, the vertical one here this would be the y-axis um, this line would be potentially a Z and this line down here at the bottom is potentially an x-axis. Um, so we want to align to those and it's a lot easier to do with a square than it is an ellipse so we will create a box on top of this. Uh, we'll hit M for the rectangle tool and we'll shift alt uh, right from the center hit our points and there it is, fit right on top. Uh, we'll hit V to, for the selection tool uh, then we'll group those, control G and now we have uh, one object that's together that we can use to rotate. Um, choosing which axis to align to uh, really depends on the illustration. I think this time along will be fine if I just move this one of the corners uh, onto the onto the y-axis and then we'll rotate from there. So we select the object, hit R to enable the rotate tool and uh, you can't really see it that well. I'll try to zoom in. Eh, that doesn't make one bit of difference because it scales. Or uh, The um, crosshairs appear in the center here. You can barely see it uh, but you want to grab those crosshairs, move it to your rotate point. Now you can 
as you can see you can rotate that however you like so we're just going to get that aligned to one of the axes that exists in the original artwork and now we're ready to use the free transform tool uh, we'll just reposition this a little bit to get a little bit closer so uh, when I'm done with the tool it will be in a decent position alright um, now for the tree free transform tool uh, that is the E key so we'll hit E and now we're ready we're gonna move on to one of the handles here and uh, to use the free transform it's a combination of keys in this case it's gonna be the uh, left mouse and the control button uh, you just want to remember that you want to left click on your mouse first then hit control and we're ready to go with the free transform you can see that the chase the cursor changes and a left right arrow appears underneath that and here we go you can see that is free transform in action um, so we just want to kinda transform that into a shape that's roughly what we're looking for as you can see already um, it's not aligned exactly right uh, but that's okay because um, what we can do is just release it let everything go and then we can kind of start rotating it uh, to get it exactly where we want to be um, or pretty close at least uh, so I'm just gonna reshape it a little bit and uh, we'll get something that's usable as I said we're not gonna end up using the this the free transform tool for this project um, I I want to opt to do this uh, freehand and uh, I ran through this once and I just got a better result doing it freehand uh, part of the reason for that is the uh, because of this being a perspective image uh, which we discussed earlier so alright there we go I mean that's pretty close so we're gonna select it ungroup it delete the box and uh, just give you an idea of something that we can do with this tool um, so the first question is probably why would you use the free transform tool when you could just simply hit L create an ellipse and put it into shape it looks like that works fine um, it depends really on how complex of an object you're going to be illustrating of why as to why you would want to use that and we'll take a look at this in outline mode uh, to give you a better idea so I'll select both objects hit control Y to go into outline mode and as you can see I'll select these so we can see all the points uh, what we have is we have an ellipse that was drawn as you would normally do it um, and we have our points top bottom left and right uh, but in this one what we have over here on the left uh, the points have been rotated or skewed around the circle in a way that lands these points in line with the planes of the actual drawing that we're using so if you had to draw a uh, you know perhaps some kind of a cylinder with um, with notches in it that and the notches existed on the front and the back of your ellipse um, you would have these points as guides uh, for creating those again so we would we have this anchor corresponds more with the front of these circles uh, and this point corresponds with the sides of the circles whereas if you were to just use the ellipse tool without the free transform tool uh, it wouldn't have that alignment um, just for the purpose of illustration we'll just kinda make something out of this Oops, we didn't want to do that we want to use the uh, rectangle tool hit M we're just gonna make a quick little drum here just just for the sake of visualizing this a little bit better uh, it looks like all of our shapes here don't have a fill so we're gonna fix that um, we're gonna select this top object control shift bracket right to bring it to the front and select these the bottom two objects go to the pathfinder tools unite and there you have a little little drum or a, potentially a cylinder um, uh, yeah, let's get rid of the pallets here um, and then uh, if you wanted to make a cylinder out of this uh, you could of course control C copy 
and then F while holding control for copy front. Um, and that's one way to make a cylinder, although that's probably not very accurate. A better way to do that might be to hit hit that object and do object path offset path. Uh, we're just guessing here. We'll do negative two points enter and that gives us uh, perhaps depending on what you're illustrating it might give us a more accurate um, uh, shape uh, to use so uh, you know maybe that's more cylindrical um, and again we have all these points particularly this again that would be the front say you have a, a notch that you would have to draw in here um, this would just help as a guide um, but again we're not going to be using that approach uh, for this particular project so um, let's get into the freehand portion